as George said, we have the Bible study on Wednesday night, and we just sit around the table with our pens, and I try to give out real, really good notes for you to take home, to add to those notes, and it, it's such an, uh, uh, an assuring time where you just sit there at the table, there's no pressure, you just have your pen, you have your paper, you have your notes given to you, and we spend about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, going through the scriptures, going through the book of Jeremiah, and then the last 10 or 15 minutes we have prayer for requests that people have. It's just a really a good time. We, 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 we're really good about letting everybody out around 8 o'clock, so it's just like one good hour. Now this week could be an hour and a half because we're having the meal at, at 6.30, then 7 to 8 on the Bible study. But do, do, I would encourage you. It is, a, it is a very interesting time to really examine and study the Word of God like, like never before. And very, very helpful. And that kind of leads to what we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, there have been articles that I have read in recent times about Bible illiteracy. It is, it is amazing in our country uh, how illiterate people are concerning the Bible. And, you know, like doctors, they receive an AMA journal week of, regularly, and they keep up with what's going on in the world of medicine. But ministers also have uh, journals and magazines that are sent to us to help us keep up with what's going on in, in the country, in, in the culture, in the, in the, in the church world as well. One of these came, at, and recently I've seen so much about Bible illiteracy. And one came just recently. Uh, so we hear a lot about uh, biblical illiteracy in America. Uh, the, the American Bible Society conducted a survey, and this is some of the things they found. 54% of Americans uh, consider themselves Bible disengaged. 54% of Americans consider themselves Bible disengaged. The, um, the disengaged are primarily classified by infrequent interaction with the Bible. 14% of Americans read the Bible on a regular or daily basis. Only 14% of Americans who read or use the Bible on a regular daily basis. 22% of Americans, 22% of Americans who believe, only 22% of Americans believe the Bible is inspired word of God. 22%, pretty amazing. 56% of Americans who believe the U.S. Constitution is more important to the moral fiber of the country than the Bible. We're living in some crazy stuff, people. 16% percentage of Americans who believe the Bible is only 16% of Americans who believe the Bible is necessary for daily life. And they would rather choose coffee or something sweet or social media over the Bible. It is uh, pretty amazing what is being revealed in some of these articles that I've received recently. And um, there is power in the Bible. Amen. Or there is, I named it Bible power. Amen. The Word, the Logos. Let's ask the Lord to make it real to us today. Father, we thank you for your your spirit of, that is among us, your Holy Spirit that is moving in our hearts even now. And Father, through the songs of praise, we felt your presence here. And you said, we are, you, where we are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of us. And we recognize that today. Father, we ask you to anoint our ears to hear and our words as we give them today. It will make a difference in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Bible power, the word 
the Logos, the Word, the Lamp, the Light, the Bread, the Wisdom, the Storage. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. I'll talk about Bible power is God's word for practical, fruitful living. How many believe that the word of God makes a difference in your living and how you live? Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, my pathway. Listen. The only lamp in the world that produces spiritual light is the lamp of God's Word. Amen? God's Word lights the way, giving direction to every step my feet takes. Amen? He lights the way. God's Word lights the way. God's Word gives wisdom for long-range plans to my path. We need help in the short run and in the long run. We need God's guidance right now. And we're going to need it tomorrow as well. Amen. Bible power. I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God is powerful. It is the Word of the living God. There's power in this book. It changes things. It makes all the difference. My daughter lost the love of her life after just a few years of them being together and having a life together. And she finds him on the ground and he's already passed on. She tries to resuscitate him. He falls off this ladder. Nobody really saw it, but that's what seemed to have happened. And hit his neck on a, a root under the ground a little bit under the leaves. And he was gone just like that. And you talk about hard. Uh, Joan and I spent a lot of time on the phone. Joan flying up to, to New England to be with her. Listen, my daughter was, thought she was going to go crazy. She, it was just so hard to deal with that. But I want to tell you as a testimony for her today, if she was here and she could give it. It was the Word of God and the presence of God that saved her life. From this horrible loss that she had in her life. I, I tell you, I, I, I talk with her all the time about things in the Bible, and, and Jerry, I'm coming to believe she knows it better than I do now. She actually devoured the Word of God after her loss, and after the horrible things she went through, losing the love of her life, her soulmate. It was the Word of God that sustained her. The Word of God is powerful, amen? Sharper than any two-edged sword. Makes a difference in our lives. Bible power. God's Word for practical, fruitful living. It is God's Bible power that gives us faithful living as we store it. Mass storage. We store that Word, and He brings that Word to our remembrance the moment we need it. It's amazing. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Lay up in my heart, in my subconscious, I treasure what God promises in his word. If you'll notice my little, little interesting thought I thought I've had, I said, you, your word is hid in my heart and not in the cloud. You know, everybody's got this cloud they put their information in. You, if the cloud ain't going to help you, you've got to get it put in your heart, into your subconscious. Amen? Your word have I hid. Another article that I received talks about how that when we read the Bible and engage in the Bible at least four or more times a week, it decreases the odds of giving in to temptation. It's amazing. It decreases the odds of feeling bitter. Now, this, this is done by people that do mathematics, mathematics, and here's what they said. If you read the Bible and engage in the Bible four or more times a week, it decreases the chances of feeling bitter by 40%. It decreases 
the chances of feeling destructive about self and others by 32%. Reading the Bible on that regular basis decreases having the difficulty to forgiving others by 31%. All these things decreases the odds for feeling spiritually stagnant by 60%. It decreases the odds by those who feel like they can't please God of 44%. Is that not amazing? And people who read the Bible on a regular basis, they have they increase 400% plus in wanting to give to God and give to missions. Over 400% increased. Listen, the Word of God makes the difference. David said, I hide the word of God in my heart that I might not sin against thee. For faithful living, we hide the word. It's Bible power. Bible power, God's word, giving wisdom to the simple. When I read that, I said, that's me. I, I don't know if it was one of these Christian comedians said we're all made from common clay. People just don't like for you to look at them and call them common. I said we all are made from common clay. But people just don't take kindly when you call them common. And neither do people feel take kindly when you call them simple. Well, I hate to tell you, the Bible calls us simple in this verse 130. Put in your notes Verse 130 of Psalms 119. When thy word goeth forth, it gives light and understanding unto the simple. Amen. The unfolding of thy words making the simple understand. Now, in that passage, the Hebrew word is Pahali, Pahali, is a Hebrew word, a truth pointing towards the avoidance of making decision based on human delusion or outright senselessness. How many have made some bad decisions and you feel like somebody needs to write dumb or stupid on your forehead and make you walk outside a couple of days for everybody to see it? I'm number one. I, I, in fact, I may have to instruct Joan to do that sometime. Just write it on my forehead and make me go out in public for a few days for people to see it. Bible power gives wisdom to the simple. Let God's word guide. Let God's word correct. Let God's word instruct, lead, teach, confirm. Don't proceed without it. We need it every day as we leave the house. We need God's word to guide us. A lamp to our feet. A light to our pathway. Proverbs 6.23 says, For the commandments is a lamp. The law is the light. Reproofs of instruction are the ways of life. Proverbs 6.23 in 1 Corinthians 3, chapter 1 through 3, Paul says this. I've got to read that in my 26 translation, but I really like it. I, 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 I love reading it out of there because it just makes a lot of sense. Listen to what he says. And I, this is Apostle Paul, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual. Uh, because they, these things are spiritually discerned. And he says, but I have to speak unto you as carnal. I had to deal with you on a merely natural plane, even as unto babes in Christ, mere infants in the faith of Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat. I like what Philip's translation is. My practice has been to feed you as it were with milk and not with the meat of the word. For you were not able 
able to take it. You were not able to digest the meat in those days. And even now, you still have to be fed milk. For you are yet worldly or carnal. You are still of a worldly attitude. And you still act like children. Well, listen. He goes on to say, I wanted to give you the meat of the word, but you couldn't receive it. You couldn't take it. And he says, you need the meat of the word. And then he goes into, I am Paul, and the others are of Apollos, and he goes into that discourse. But he says, we need not just the milk of the word, we need the meat of the word. Amen? Bible power gives wisdom to the simple. Bible power gives God's word is the bread from heaven that brings life and spiritual nourishment. You can't have life without it. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and this Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. We need the Logos Word, and we need the Rainbow Word, when the Holy Spirit brings it to life to us. Amen? We need the life-giving Word of God. It's got to be more than just words on the page. It's got to be a word that comes alive and becomes the real word of God to our spirit and to who we are. Amen. The Bible is God's word. It is the bread from heaven that brings life. And we can't do without it. Look in John chapter 6, if you would. Thirty-one through thirty-five. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Jesus is talking now, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. They refer to man well, as bread from heaven. Jesus says, I say to you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never thirst, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Listen. We need that bread from heaven. Amen? I'm here glad that you have the bread from heaven that sustains us. And not only do we need the bread from heaven, Jerry, we need that fresh bread, that rhema, that bread that comes and moves us. How many have been reading the scriptures and you've read one particular verse over and over? You may have read it a hundred times then all of a sudden you're in a particular situation in your life and you read that verse you've read a hundred times and what happens that time? It becomes that rainbow. It just leaps off the page at you. It just comes alive inside of you. We need the living bread. We need fresh bread from heaven. Amen? And God will give you if you're hungry and you're sincere and you want to be fed and you're ready to go to the buffet of heaven, God will fill you to the fullness of the bread of life. And I'll tell you, 
It'll fill you to absolute satisfaction. And when you leave that buffet of the bread of life, you will not hunger. Even physically, you won't even want anything because he satisfies. Notice at the bottom of your page, more than half of those who read the Bible on a regular basis feel it has a strong effect on how they think and how they act. It gives a greater awareness of how much we need God. There is a sad story in our country. Our country has leaders that are despicable, that are liars and cheats, and our country is moving away from God more and more we need people to have a revival back to the Word of God. Amen. I tell you the truth, we need to pray for our country and pray for the church of Jesus Christ. Because we need to get back to the basics and back to the Bible. And we need leaders to get saved. Amen. Let's stand again if we could. You know, this Bible, this Word of God, just, you know, you get up in the morning and you, you want to read, but then you, you kind of go back to sleep. And, oh, I'll just lay it on my chest and see if I can get some power out of it that way. But well, all it's going to do is slide off your chest. It's not going to do much for you. You've got to, you know, that's not like me. My doctor says I need to take certain things. I take a low dose of aspirin every day. I can keep it in my pocket. In fact, I got my meds in my pocket right now because I forgot to take them this morning. They're in this little bag. That's where they are. And you know, it's amazing. They can stay in this pocket for 50 years. And they're not going to do me no good. Worthless in this little plastic bag. But if I take them out of the bag and get some water and take them the way I'm supposed to take them, they will do what they're supposed to do. The Bible on your coffee table or on your chest is not going to do you much good. We need to come on Wednesday night and study the set of the table and study the Word of God. It, it is some, we've been learning so much about Jeremiah. It's been amazing how exciting it's been. Everybody leaves just really energized by the Word of God. Because there is such a thing as Bible power. But you've got to use it. You've got to take it in. You gotta let that little gospel become that raiment to your life. And how many believe that's possible for us all? Amen. I tell it to people all the time, Randy. The Lord, the reason why the Lord called me to preach, to keep me saved. Because I have to study the Word of God. And, and, I, and so I believe that's one reason why He called me, because that's the only way He's going to get me to heaven. Making me have to study the Word of God. But when I was in school, I was a little bit lazy. I study. But Ed, I have to study all the time now. God is good. Amen. Study the Word as though your life depends on it. Because it does. you got to have the bread from heaven. Let's sing together. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of 
thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Touch us today, Lord. Feed us with that bread from heaven, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I told you before, maybe I'll kind of tell you a little bit more. We had a revival in East Tennessee that lasted eight weeks. It was only started for one week. We had Mr. Reverend Floyd come and preach for us. He was a Baptecostal. I mean, those were a Baptecostal. That's a Baptist who got filled with the Holy Ghost. He came and preached for us for one week. The revival went on for eight weeks. Two services a day. And the thing that brought people out twice a day was the Word of God being, being given. Word of God. This guy was a Word teacher, a Word preacher. People came because they were hungry for the Word of God. And they came twice a day to get off of work. It was amazing. We were a whole mission church of 30-something people, and we wound up having over 7,000 people come to revival in eight weeks. Listen, people got so hungry for the Word of God, they even didn't eat their meals. They stopped cooking some days because they were more hungry for the Word of God than they were food, natural food. Well, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Oh, let's sing one more time. We're going to meet in the middle here and have a closing prayer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Sing, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. God is good, isn't he? God is so good to feed us and give us that bread from heaven. Amen. Shall we?